can we really make examples of jihad, of sanctuaries for jihad being associated with mosques? Well, we should remember that 80% of the mosques in America are funded and controlled by Saudi Arabia. They control the buildings. They have people who, oh, it's almost like a franchise. Uh, there's the people who, are, who want a mosque, there's not enough of them to pay for the mosque. They fill out an application like you would for a McDonald's franchise. They send it off to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia evaluates and makes a commitment. They put the money up. They bring the architects in. They sign all the paperwork to get the permits. It's like a franchise. 80% of the 3,000 mosques are, in fact, controlled by Saudi Arabia and other, other countries who provide... If you might have heard in Germany, with all the people going into Germany, Saudi Arabia proclaimed they would build 200 mosques for free in Germany. That's what we're talking about. Why do they do that? To promote Sharia, to put 3,000 seats of government where Sharia is trained and documented and act upon into a foreign country like America. The key part of this is the imams are selected and travel to Saudi Arabia for training. They then come home. They do their job. They're connected through social networks with worldwide messages that go out every Friday and are trained in a mosque in Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, or Dearborn, or uh, Warren, or Rochester Hills. Let's look at some examples. Here's a mosque in Columbus, Ohio. Now, here's where I'm going to not be trained to give you the education. I want you to know the police chief spends time with each one of these stories talks about these people, their names, the crimes they were committed. These people have all been indicted for terrorist activity. Again, remember, jihad is mass murder. They were planning or committed uh, crimes, including murder, out of that one mosque. Uh, I can't tell you who they are because I don't have that detail. He does. This is what the police are trained in. Every one of these people has a story associated with them. Um, these are not nice people. These are people who were committed uh, to jihad in America, and of course, the mosque will deny ever knowing them, but they were all associated in the police records with the mosque. Um, here are other mosques in other cities. Um, I believe that's a mosque outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, this is a mosque. This is the Boston Mosque we're going to talk about soon. This is the associated mosque in Cambridge, which is, of course, if you remember the Boston Marathon attacks, uh, we're going to show you that they were associated with these mosques. So these are real sanctuaries for jihad. Uh, here's a, a mosque in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, this gentleman is a very, very well-known imam. He gave, it, he o gave an opening prayer in the House of Representatives in the 1990. He is a key advisor to Linda Sarsour, the woman that you might know who heads up the Women's March and is a major supporter of Abdul. Um, he is a radical imam. In that mosque, there's been illegal weapon trafficking. Um, money's been raised for jihads like, jihadis like Hamas, the blind sheik. Uh, associated with the World Trade, uh, preach there, and there's even been training in that mosque um, about disarming police. So uh, we're just going to keep going. Every one of these has a story, um, and this is what the police are trained in. Next, there are places in Tucson, in, in, uh, in Arizona, where there have been people associated with, these people were associated with the Garland shooting with uh, Pamela Geller. Uh, again, let's, we're going to roll through Boston. This is incredible. All of these people have been associated with the Boston Islamic Center, Islamic Society of Boston. Um, this is the guy that we saw. He was his presenter when Abdul sat down at the convention this year. This gentleman got up. His claims to fame include that he was the imam where the Oklahoma gentleman left the mosque and went out and beheaded a woman in America. Incredible. And there have been other people through that mosque. I'm just going to show you pictures. You see if you recognize anybody that you might know. All of these people have been associated with indictments for terrorist activity. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, okay. These two people should be familiar. These are the two brothers that took uh, people down in the Boston Marathon. So, again, there's a detailed story, a level of indictment. Uh, this is an e a Muslim person giving out, warning us about uh, mosques. The third battlefront is the mosques. In many, there is incitement to hate and untimely and ultimately to violence. So this is a Muslim official giving us a warning. Uh, this is a whole book by this gentleman um, who's a former terrorist explaining what happens inside of mosques. This woman, for example, is pointing out indoctrination into violent political ideology thrives through the polit politicization of 
of mosques as a polarizing hotspot for radicalization. This is where it happened. We're not saying it happens in every mosque. Obviously, it doesn't happen to everybody who goes into a mosque. But why are we not in mosque? Why has CARE, including this woman in, uh, who heads up Minnesota's CARE, um, demanded that the FBI stop recruiting informants and going into mosques? Why are mosques locked? Why can your policemen not go into the mosque on Auburn Road? Or the, or the mosques um, in walking distance of here. Why can they not get entrance into mosques? Um, you cannot let anyone preach, Germany needs to control mosques to fight terrorism. That came from the United Arab Emirates minister. Remember, the, the Ar United Arab Emir Emirates has declared the Muslim Brotherhood an international terrorist organization. They should know. They live there. And they're pointing out that we are too lax in the way we deal with mosques. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's tough to be a Christian, it's tough to be a Jew. We are the targets.